I would like to show you how to add a Map Magic World Generator terrain and then add the Relief Terrain Pack component to it so that you can use these two powerful tools side by side. Map Magic includes the necessary stuff that, that you need in order to get RTP working out of the box, but I just found that there just wasn't really very great documentation. Uh, there's a video that I found on YouTube, but it was based on an older version of MathMagic and an older version of RTP, and the video's resolution was fairly poor. So I figured that I would try and record something that's a little bit higher resolution to help other people along. You start off, uh, actually I want to go to the MathMagic folder, and in there you should find a zip file called rtpplugin.zip. If you have not already installed it, you do so by double clicking on that file. Your computer will unpack the zip, it'll create the RTP plugin folder, and it'll put the uncompressed files into your RTP plugin folder for you. Then you're all set to go. Now you can go over to your project hierarchy, right click, and under 3D object, you'll see that option for map magic. Your terrain will appear almost immediately. Map Magic is very fast. Then when you select it, over here in your inspector, you'll see that you have a few options. Under general settings, these are very similar to the Unity terrain settings. Resolution, it starts very low and it goes up very high. Uh, the higher that you go, the longer time that it takes to process. Uh, so go with whatever you need for your project, or the, I should say go with the least that you need for your project. Anything more than you need is just going to take longer to process. Uh, I'm going to go with 1024, which suits me, and then you can change your terrain size and height. By default here, this is 1,000 or 1 kilometer squared. I'm not generating an infinite terrain, so I'm going to uncheck that. Multi-threaded means to make use of the multiple processing threads. If you have a multi-core machine, uh, then you're, you either have th uh, the same number of threads as processor cores, or if your computer has hyper-threading, then you've got twice as many. Uh, I've got a 12-core machine that does support hyper-threading, so I can go up to 24. Uh, I'm going to go 23, which just gives me a little bit of overhead. From there, I'm going to click on the Show Editor button, and it gives me this floating panel that has the map magic node map. Uh, on a single monitor display, this is not a very convenient way to work. So what I'm going to do is click and drag to simply pull this down to this lower panel. And now it shows up here. Since I've gone ahead and unzipped that RTP plugin, I can just right click here click on create and under output you'll see RTP but this shows that it's not going it's an alert message that says it could not find the relief terrain component well of course that's because we've just created a fresh project and we've only added the map magic uh, component it tells us the steps that we need to do in order to get our RTP component working and of course, it's nice enough to offer to perform all of that automatically. Let's go ahead and do that. It sets things up with the four blank terrains. And then up here we get a notification that says the RTP LOD manager object is going to be added to the scene. This is normal. This is what happens whenever you add relief terrain a script to an object or to a terrain. Uh, so I'm gonna hit click OK. And you'll see over here that the RTP LOD manager is in fact added to our screen, or is in fact added to our hierarchy. Um, but I've got four empty textures, and I need to go ahead and fix that. We'll add some in here. When we click on Map Magic, first thing I want to point out is under Terrain Settings, it defaults to 1,000, and if you notice here that this is sort of sliding and moving around its base map distance. 
there will be more on this later. I just want to let you know what that control is and where the adjustment is in case you see that in your project. For me, it has appeared sometimes and not all the time. And down here you'll see that the Relief Terrain script component is there, and it looks like we only have one texture. It's actually four textures, it just looks invisible because we don't have anything in here. Here's zero, one, two, and three. Uh, RTP starts its numbering with zero. In order to fill these, what I want to do is go over to my project panel, go down to my textures, and then I've got a folder with some terrains. Obviously, you go with whatever works for you. I'm going to start by throwing in my stuff. I like to start with a rocky terrain, serves as a sort of a bedrock. And I add the matching normal map and height map. If you're not already familiar with RTP, uh, using height maps is what kind of gives it its edge. The relief in the name for RTP has doesn't have to do with the relief that you feel as much as it has to do with uh, using heights or reliefs. And so if you've got height maps, it can use that for some really advanced and fantastic blending. I want to add a dirt. Okay, now I've got four terrains. Uh, if you're not already familiar, Unity likes to work in multiples of four for terrains. And so that's where it defaults in Map Magic. And you'll see that they are already showing as expected. I want to add four more. RTP tends to work best when it's got four or eight terrain maps. And so I want eight in Nicene. And to add those, you click Add Layer those four times, and so now you got 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, 6, and 7. And let me take a moment to just simply drop in my maps. Your terrains need to be the same size for any given texture type. So if you want to use a 1024 detail map for your grass, uh, it means that they need to be not the same size across here, but across the, the detail or the normal or the height. So you'd need 1024 in each of these, or 2048 or 512 or whatever setting you want. You can go with a different setting for your normal map. So you can have 2048 here and then drop it down to 256 here and also 256 here, but just make sure that all of the normals across all of your textures are the same. And the same is true for your height maps. Let's get to these last textures. And then I follow it up. I'm going to want to put a path in here that I will paint later. And so now I've got eight terrains here, or terrain sets here, and they all appear as expected here in the RTP panel. Now I need to go to the RTP LOD manager. Uh, actually, I'm going to compile that and fix that in a few moments. Uh, first things first, let's move this out of the way. Dennis has an excellent tutorial. I believe it's uh, tutorial number three for Matte Magic. Uh, explains how to add textures and then use uh, procedural tools to go ahead and, and assign textures to terrains. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you watch that and check out his other tutorials as well. And for this I'm just going to do a really simple curve. 
that will drive our grass. I plug the output from our map, the thing that's creating this terrain. I'm going to plug it into this curve, and then I'm going to plug that over into the grass. Now you see this is not quite doing what I want here. Notice how that's showing up like so. So we go back up here to our base map distance on the map magic inspector. And we drop that in closer. And that looks better, but it doesn't look necessarily like what we want. Uh, first things first, under settings, when the first time we click Perlin Noise, it goes ahead and, and applies that. And it allows a noise map to be applied to the terrain, and it helps break up uh, what would otherwise seem like really obvious and monotonous scaling. Uh, from this distance and at this resolution, it always looks like a lot of scaling anyways. But as you get further along in the project, you'll find that it gets to be uh, easier to get more, more lifelike. I'm not going to go into all the details of using Relief Terrain Pack. But here's our grassy. We can fine tune how the grass works in here with Perlin and all those settings. Again, though, I don't want to get into all of the details of our TP. I just want to show you how you are now plugging it in. Because we're feeding these things directly into our TP from Map Magic, And I can go ahead and play with this curve now and come up with better settings. At least what I think are going to be better settings. Uh, the way this works is that uh, zero or no coverage at all is down here, uh, down on the bottom of the map. Towards the top is solid coverage. Uh, that's think of it as um, opacity. So completely opaque. Uh, green is showing all the way through at the top levels. And then uh, over here on the left side is low elevation and high elevation. So as you can see down here where the elevation is low we have no grass showing. And then when the elevation gets higher, we have the grass showing up at the top. Uh, in order to go ahead and create a different kind of curve, I'm going to go ahead and double click here to create another spot. Let's go, let's say here, and flatten that out. And you'll see here, it takes a moment for it to update. I've double clicked again so I can shape that curve a little bit. It takes a moment to update, but you'll find uh, Map Magic is automatically updating itself. I'll bring it in here a little bit more since we really want the grass to end before we get to the very top of the terrain. And then we're just going to experiment with bringing this down. Drag it down a little bit and eventually it'll update. And now you can see that the, the caps of the mountains there are no longer covered with grass. Depending upon the kind of world you're building, that might be ideal for you. But for my project, that's not what I wanted to have. And as you can see here, as this, this S curve goes in, um, let's try and zoom in a little. You can see that fade. And how that's working in here.
But now you can see that it's working. Again, I'm not going to try and go through a tutorial on all the different tools and all the different pieces, but you're set to go. I can go ahead and, and adjust this on my end since it, for my project, I don't plan on doing uh, grass at the very start. I actually want to have sea level be a little bit higher than the base so that the ground uh, underwater can have a little bit of, of bumps and, and stuff going on and maybe some barnacles, which is why they added that texture down here. Uh, but you get the idea. You see how this works. And uh, once you've added that plugin, you can get going with as many of uh, the RTB features and functions that you need. Good luck.